Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gamer Grudge. Welcome to another episode of Gamer Grudge. Woo, Gamer Grudge! <laughs> <laughs> Nine. I was gonna say, don't you say ninety-eight? It's ninety-nine. Wait, Y two K is upon us. Gaming but, in the nineties. But so, Josh, you don't know. Theo's <laughs> confused. Uh oh. He he sent oh. me ninety-eight. I'm confused now. No 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 no. Okay. Um. So right now it's Y two. It's um nineteen ninety-eight. It's New Year's. And it's nineteen ninety-nine. Get with the get with it, Theo. What year do you think we're in? Uh, 2019? No. Time paradox. <laughs> anyway. Time paradox, no! No! And there's a hole in the rip of time now. Yeah, we just messed it up. All right. So, for those that, for those that have been here, you, you all know what all goes on. You all love this, this show. But right now, Let's get to our introductions before we get down to these rules and regulations. We are, we are unfortunately missing a fighter, but if they show up, we will gladly get them in. But right now, for our fighters, please introduce yourselves. We shall start with Angie. Hi, I'm Angie. I'm a little hyper right now. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, Mac. There you go. There you go. Right. Oh, I'm Mac. I, I, um, I, I, this is 1999, people. Um, I totally, totally enjoy Mega Man X4 Rocks. Um, it's the best game of all time, but 1998 is a great year. I cannot wait for Y2K. Woo! 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right. Joining us on Fact Check, we have the ever-popular Theo Van. Yep, okay. I'm Theo Van. Um, yeah, cool. Facts. Cool. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, guys. So if You're I fact get food, checker. If I never come back, this is probably why. Yeah, yeah. We understand. Uh, we'll, we'll just teach you harder. Yeah. <laughs> and as you all know, I am the... The lovely producer behind the scenes. You all know me as Zero. But as right now, because Mac is fighting, I am taking his spot as host for tonight. I was a host. <laughs> I guess the past couple episodes, Mac's like not been the host. No, oh, I'm, I'm a, the host. I'm, this is 1999. I mean, I'm the. I was a host of a show. Wow. Cool. All right, that that act is growing old. <laughs> <laughs> Theo's face. She's just so done with everything. <laughs> All right. So now that we now that we know who the fighters are, we can get right in. We can either get right into the rules. The, mod, the, yeah, the rules, rules are and rules. Yeah, the rules, rules are here. Yeah. All right. The rules. There are four rounds with one question per round. The point is awarded with, to the fighter with the best argument, not the best answer. If we get the best answer, then we'll have unfair and unfair mutiny coming across the internet, and everybody will say that that person should have won based on argument. So, based on their quick answer, this is based on the argument, not the answer itself, people. So that's what we want to tell you. All right. The two fighters with the most points will advance to the PvP round. If they're in the event of the tie, which usually happens, there will be a tiebreaker round, um, which will commence in the form of gr quick bait or grudge quiz. The phases. Um, there are five phases in Game of Grudge, as you know. There's phase one, the introductory round, where you simply... Where the, well, the people simply state their answer. That's all. They're just stating their answer. I don't care about anything else about it. I don't care about the this answer's day. We just want to know your answer. 
Phase two, the declaration. This is where you make your argument by yourself with no interruption. The other way is going to interrupt you during this round, so you don't have to worry about people coming in and trying to steal your spotlight. Phase three is the grudge. It's a free for all. This is the this is the part where uh, where the fat checkers and the judge cut off their mic and y'all just then everybody just go at it. This is where you go at it. This is, there's, there's no rules. This is the part where you literally are literally cut throating each other to get the answers to get, basically, this is what you're going to be judged on. Taking down the opponent's answer. That's all it is. Now there's phase four, which is the last minute round, where the judge will simply ask you a question. It could be anything. It's just one question where you just get one minute to give me. This is just literally, this is the point where you could possibly be tied up and i just need some confirmation from you um to cut one minute's confirmation to literally clean up and get your answer and phase five is the clean up and fact checking and the verdict people so uh let's go ahead and get to the fight itself people yep feel feel the, feel free to pause and read if you need to if not we are going on wow so, those are some great rules awesome rules i'll tell you and so, for first question of the match, what is the best game from the year 1998? We shall start as we introduced with Angie. I chose The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Damn it. Um... Okay, Mac? Um... I chose um, the Hido Kojima classic, um, which is a great inventor who's going to probably be making movies in the future, probably in the millennium. Um, he, um, Metal Gear Solid. Is he making movies right now? <laughs> I don't know. Do you consider Death Stranding a movie? I don't know. Hold, hold on, wait a minute. What is he's, still, he's still trying to do the 99 bit, guys. <laughs> Yeah, the act's getting old. Drop it. Move on. Where's your cards? I don't know. I, I cleaned my entire office, and I cannot find them now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that doesn't mean you can get away with stuff, Mac. <laughs> All right. So, declaration round begins now. Angie, please tell us the reason why you chose Ocarina of Time. Okay. Well, I chose Ocarina of Time because... We know it's one of the best Legend of Zelda games that has ever been. It's a timeless classic. It was the fifth main installment of the Legend of Zelda series. And it just did so many different things that Legend of Zelda didn't really do. Like, you get the time travel. Um, you got an ocarina, which was some of the best, like one of the coolest instruments ever, in my opinion. That's also coming from a flute player. Um, but, you know, this is basically during... A really weird time in Hyrule and it just kind of explains more of the story from the previous game which was oh I'm getting my games confused so I went over the Zelda timeline again and now I got my games all backwards um but yeah that is why I chose Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time I'm, I'm very sorry for that declaration that was not a very good one I apologize <laughs> All right, Mac, why did you choose Metal Gear Solid? Look, um, Metal Gear Solid is an amazing, amazing game um, created by Hida Kojima. Um, this game um, did a lot of good things. Um, for example, um, as you're playing through the game, um, it literally responds to you being a part of the game. Where it, I, I remember in the beginning, I, this, this is what it does to you. It literally tells you, um, I remember there was a part at the beginning of the game, when I first played Metal Gear Solid, and they said, um, when you got done rescuing the, um, the director Baker from the, um, from the room from, from um, Robert Ocelot, which was already an epic battle, mind you, in a C4 environment where you got to shoot Revolver Ocelot in that situation. I remember the part where he said, you got to find Meryl's codec, and it says, it's on the back of the CD. And I'm like, what in the world are you talking about? And then you literally flip the back of your dad on CD 
there goes Meryl Salt Kodak number. And I was like, what? It's that type of stuff that Metal Gear Solid does. It's, it's self-aware of breaking the fourth wall, which is interesting. Also, has a compelling story um, about a soldier who is um, who's brought out of retirement to literally go take down this big machine called Metal Gear. Um, it has a lot of rotating stories around it where, you know, we got um, him they, trying to face the face his former unit, um, um, Fox, um, his former unit, Foxham, um, which is interesting. I, I mean, you get the story with Sniper Wolf, who is interesting. Interesting story with Sniper Wolf. Every last one of those characters have a great back turn story. Sniper Wolf has a great back turn story. Raven Vulcan has a great back turn story. He's a soldier fortune that wants to that wants to fight Snake in the very own. I mean, Psycho Mantis was had that t- trouble as a child. I mean, um, Thicko Octopus who died, but you know, oh well. And and the one that their leader, which is Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake is an interesting character in itself because it turns out that he is your brother and you look just alike. It's, a, it's just snake with blonde hair, which is interesting. And the ending is just so fun. You could, there's, there's different sets of endings where you could literally, okay, if you survive the torture a little bit longer, you could say, Meryl, if you die, if you literally just give up on the torture, Meryl dies. And um, I like that. I like the fact that it gives you that ability. Like, you control the decision of what you do. And this game is so epic, so awesome. The weapons in it is awesome. It doesn't do too much into the game to take it away from it. Um, the, 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 the controls the controls are awesome. It, it's a good all-around game. Um, it, don't, it, I, it didn't take me long to beat it. But yeah, Metal Gear Solid, great game, great game in the series. That's all I have to say. All right, yeah, I was about to say you approach time pretty quick. All right, guys, you know the deal. As soon as I press this button, Grudge Round starts. Begin. Why did you have to choose Metal Gear Solid? Why? Why, why did you have to choose Ocarina of Time? Okay, I chose Ocarina of Time because it is one of the first 3D games in the 90s that came out with the new engine that was just being pretty much tested. I, I, I think that's a lie because it, Mario uh, it is the first 3D Zelda game. It was one of the first 3D Nintendo 64 games there was Mario in the 90s. Uh, 64. One of the first. One of the first. Uh, okay. Um... I'm just going to put this out there that while Ocarina of Time is a great story, it's a great story. Awesome gameplay, awesome all this. Um, I feel like it's a story that's told very well, and I'm trying to keep it within the realm of 1998 and not go beyond it. While it's a great story, I think um, it it does get boggles down with the other older ones. I mean, personally and honestly, I do, as much as I love Ocarina of Time, I would rather play Link to a Pass or Link's Awakening, and I still get more enjoyment out of that game than Ocarina of Time. Because the 3D aspect of that game does annoy you. And the fact that it's on Nintendo 64, Nintendo 64 controls are not the best controls to a system. But they're not the worst. I'm not saying they're the worst, but they're and not they, the best. They, they, had a sim- they had like a simplified, like, yeah, but game like, like set for you to play Ocarina of Time. So it wasn't that complicated. Buttons, it was, there were so many buttons to it. Like you got the start button in the middle, you got yeah. the up and down button, and then you got these the, the right. Thing. Okay, you're just describing any other buttons right now. Yeah, but it's just, <laughs> there's every controller has a start button. Every controller what, has a D pad. With Ocarina of Time, it's the N64. It took me away from it. I meant that it, it that's what took me away from it. I was like, it's a good game, beautiful looking game and all, but the it is a beautiful looking game. It, it has took, like it has the three D modeling. It has it had they had to like up everything because they were trying to make it look so beautiful I as agree. it is. I agree. But And like, you know, there's you got this is like the first game where you could use music to travel into different dimensions. I mean, one of the first games to use I, music. I see you, Zero. Knock it off. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, did, did, didn't he do this in Link to a Link to a Past, where he literally blew the whistle to get to travel from different places? I yes, mean, that's true. But it, but you didn't like. It was a little different. 
with an ocarina, you can use different yeah. songs to control the weather. Yeah, and let's talk about that ocarina. You, if you don't get one note right, you don't get to go to that dimension. It's really well. You difficult. get to redo it. I mean, yeah, but it gets annoying every once in a while because you push one wrong button and it's like, oh yeah, dang it, I got to do. You're gonna be sitting there for a whole thirty minutes trying to get that ocarina right. It's not fun. That's where you're like, oh man, this is not fun at all. It is fun. It's fun. But um, and then like I said, with my game, I feel like it's just simple. I mean. You, it teaches you everything. You it, this game feels like a dang movie. My game feels like a feels like a movie. Like like I remember the beginning of the game. They literally got the credits going around while you're playing, directed by this guy. Like duh, duh, just like, and then they got the music, and you're sneaking into the base, and it, it, it sneaking into it, and it's like giving you a beginning and ending. Um, like the side notes where you literally are like. He's like, he's a musher, and he used to, like, you're getting a lot of backstory. This game is a complete package. It did, it did everything. It did everything. It, Metal Gear Solid was ahead of its time. It's a game ahead of its time. And I feel like it do not need, if there's a, if it does get re-released and done to uh, do some, they try to do some upgraded stuff to it, it's this game will still hold up because it don't have the extras in it. There's extras in this game where you get to see meetings of, of Snake and Naomi and Campbell and they're talking and talking about how you know going through the mission is a mission briefing. It's something interesting. Like he's telling you, it's giving you a little, little backstory of Snake because he's like, I remember the story. He was just like, he was just telling me like, why you went to Alaska? He said, I like Alaska because I like my dogs. I like mission it's the thing I like. You know, it's something interesting. It feels like Snake is an interesting character. It, it introduced us to the interesting character. Granted, there is some games on, this is a game that was originally on um, older systems, but this is the first time as Americans we get to see Solid Snake. As Americans, we get to see a fully developed Solid Snake put into action, and he's really, really kick-ass, and it's awesome. Mm, I don't think that part was true. What wasn't? Part? Well, wasn't there an arcade game? That is that was a <sighs> It's All really right. hard. I'm just, I'm just saying right now, it's really hard to fight Metal Gear Solid when you love Metal Gear Solid so much. Unfortunately, sometimes you got to do what you must because Battle Network episode, I had to fight against uh, Battle Network that I at least hold in pretty high regard for how it plays, not so much in story. <clears throat> All right. It's like Ocarina of Time. I, I love it. <laughs> I, did uh, I like screwed up so bad in this first round. I know I did. <laughs> uh, Theo, do we have? Do you have any facts that could that are against their argument for or against their arguments? That are against them? Uh, for or against? For or against? Oh, for or against? Here we go. Oh uh, shoot! What I found for Metal Gear Solid was. Um, Let's see. Release for the first PlayStation gaming console, shipping out more than 6 million copies worldwide. Metal Gear Solid doesn't have a solid fourth wall. For example, characters will sometimes berate Snake for not saving the game enough, as well as telling Snake when to change the discs. Um, for Ocarina of Time, it was inspired by the Black Sheep of the Zelda series. Shigeru... Miyamoto mm -hmm. wanted Ocarina of Time to be a first-person game. Uh, Ganon's Castle was originally a hub similar to the castle in Super Mario 64. Ocarina of Time was fe only featured Adult Link at first, and then the fishing minigame was created in secret by a guy slacking off at work. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> That makes it so much better. <laughs> so, who do you think won, Theo? I think uh, Angie did. She had a kind of a stronger argument, almost. Um, she seemed to have a little bit more facts than Mac did, just a little bit. Uh, Mac did have some solid evidence, some solid stuff, but I'm leaning more towards Angie. Okay. Based on the arguments that I have heard, 
I do actually have some of my own fa my own facts to to kind of throw to throw in. Mac, I am sorry, but it was Ocarina of Time that first gave us that gave us a first fully functional 3D targeting system. Okay. Metal Gear Solid did not have that. So your argument. I didn't, ar I, I didn't argue that though. I didn't argue that. You you argued that Metal Gear Solid was felt simpler in controls. I did argue that. Yeah. <laughs> I did argue that. Yeah. So, other but really other than that, both you guys really hit it on point, and I will say these these arguments, these game choices are actually very close to me because. While I didn't own Metal Gear Solid personally, my cousin did, so I got I got to experience it through him. Um, yeah, Mac, I'm I'm sorry, but you you shot yourself in the foot. You shot yourself in the <laughs> foot just on the simplicity and controls argument, because when I got around to playing Metal Gear Solid for myself. Yeah, no, I had a hard time even figuring out how to get into first person aim. Yeah, but you know, first person aim and Metal Gear, you're talking of Metal Gear. First person. You don't Metal do Gear. first person. You don't do first person shooting. Actually, the battle with Sniper Wolf. Yeah, that is technically first person in the Sniper Wolf battle. Because oh, you're fighting that, sni yeah, you, That's a first person shooter because you're actually got a. Yeah, you know, because yeah, sni but, sniper but not, be sniper. Yeah, that is true, but you're not in first person shooter with the whole game. I didn't say for the whole game, but it, I did have problems fumbling with the controls, fight, trying to figure out which button did which. So that okay. point just ca that that <laughs> kind of sl that I, slid I you under. It. I still don't get it. It's just like y'all just using like the evidence of the. Go ahead. I don't know what's going on here. I did not. That's not through the whole game though. I didn't argue for the whole game. That was one part, and I literally was arguing for the whole game, and she did not come back at me with nothing. Oh, um, either. Um, technically, I, I she didn't come back at me with nothing. Y'all are fighting for in technical terms, but y'all want to give it to her. I don't care. Hey. All's fair in, in love and war when Y2K is on the line in your own words. I'm just telling the truth. That's the way you thought. Y'all y'all gave her the point because y'all argued for her. She didn't argue those points. Just put, put, putting that out there. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. I'm just telling you that's what you're doing. As we move on, because people have things to do in half an hour. Question number two. What game system from the 90s will stand the test of time? Mac. This one will start with Mac. Second Saturn. I chose the Nintendo 64. All right, you've got your declaration rounds starting now with you, Mac. Second Saturn was the thing that started. The second Saturn was, um, at the beginning, it was Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, and then whatever the hell was in the 32X and the Sega CD. That was all building up the Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn was a great system for its time for the 1990, for, in 1998. It was on par with the other systems, which was the PlayStation and even the N64. It was a, it was, it's a great system. It had its own little battery system within it. Um, it also had a lot of add-ons. It has a lot of add-ons to it. You could literally hook up your internet to it. You could actually do, um, actually literally um, put, you could put a lot of things. This thing was really a system ahead. It's really ahead of its time that really has a lot of good, good, good games built into it. It has a lot of good, great games going into it. A um, lot of good games going into it, and I feel like they've had a little bit more longer time to be in it, but I've had more. Um, but the Sega, Sega Saturn has some great games that came out for, like, um, it was a Dragon, Dragon, right? was a um, Dragon, I forgot what the game was called. Um, 
but um also it has um it has its share of Mega Man games. It has Mega Man X4, Mega Man 8. It has a lot of games going into the second second um into the second Saturn. Also um also um also what is that sound? Okay. Also, it has second. The se- also remember if we still have the second Saturn, reason why the second Saturn will keep going even in today is we have Sega de Sancio. Sega de Sancio. Sega de Sancio. If you don't know who Sega de Sancio is, he's one of the best Sega mascots ever. Sega de Sancio. Sega de Sancio. We will literally have Sega de Sancio going up. That's the reason why Sega Saturn is not only the best console, it's a console that will stand the best the top, test the time. Because you're gonna when you remember Sega de Sancio, you remember Sega Saturn. I mean, he doesn't talk about any of these other consoles. He talks about Sega Saturn. He literally goes up online, he goes up on the air, literally kicking everybody's ass, going like, "You must buy Sega Saturn." You know, I just it's just something that's interesting with him into it. So I mean, like I said, great game system. Great mascot to go with it. Also has Sonic. Yeah, you can't be mad about Sonic. It has um it, and yeah, second Saturn. All right, Angie, your dick, your time starts now. All right. Well, I chose the Nintendo sixty four just because it's one of those consoles that can stand the test of time. You know, it was. Fun fact, it was called 64 because it was for its 64-bit central processing unit that was made that pretty much gave it its boost of popularity in the 90s. When it first came out, it was the one console that families wanted for everybody during the Christmas season. They fled, they like fled to the stores to go and get it. And let's not forget that it was also a beast. It was pretty much a brick. If you dropped it like from a two-story, it would still be fine. I tested it. It was it works. <laughs> And it worked just fine afterwards, you know, and it came out with a bunch of games that we were all familiar with and that most of us have grew up with Super Mario 64 Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And let's not forget one of the most influential games of time, GoldenEye 007 for the 64. <laughs> you know, it came out with all these great games that I will stay like withstand time like not, it even came out with Mario Kart. Mario Kart was one of the other like most popular games of that time. Granted, yes, the controller is a little bit funny. They were trying to do something different. But you know what? It's iconic. It's one of the most iconic consoles that you will have in your home. And that is why I chose it. All right. And your five-minute... Grudge starts now. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I remember more of Sega Genesis than I do Sega Saturn. Um, well, I really remember more of Sega, Sa- Sega Sa- um, more of um, Super Nintendo more than the Sega, um, than the um, Nintendo 64. I mean, Golden Eye, really, in all honesty, I think that's an overrated game. It's really a really overrated game. Oh, and well, should I tell stupid. you another influential game then at that time, other than 007? What? How about Alex 64? What? Alex 64? Okay, no, you, you're just, you live under a rock, sir. No, don't, don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I mean, yeah, Alex 64 is interesting. I think you're doing yourself with the controls. I think you, I think that's what you're going to remember is the controls. And I think you're talking about Iconic. I mean, yeah, it's iconic because it's Nintendo. I think Nintendo 64 is going to live on with Nintendo. The next Nintendo, Nintendo 64 would still be available today if GameCube was not released. That is the only reason yeah, yeah, but Nintendo people, 64 is null and voice because I, GameCube came out in 2000. Well, here's the thing you got to ask yourself. Is your pick because it's Nintendo or is it because of... Is it because of the N64 itself? Because It's because of the N64 itself. Like Why said, would I choose it like because I it's said, Nintendo? Like I said, if you go back, I mean, I, I mean, back in, I mean, I still own, I mean, at 1998, I still own my NES, and I still put my NES over the N64. 
any time, and I could play that more easier than the Dagon N64. I mean, Sega Saturn was just a simple. Are you only simple. saying that because you have the little Super Nintendo Mini? We're not. Because I'm just that. saying with the Super Nintendo to hook it up, you have to have that little hookup to screw into the back of your television. Otherwise, you have to get an adapter. With the 64, you don't have to do that. You just yes, have to plug do. it in. You had to no. have. Those, you had to have. You can do the little adapter with the um, Nintendo. You literally can get your four pound plug with that. And also with your with your little plot of it breaking, I literally got to get me enough. Um, I had an N sixty four and it literally broke on me. The um, power um, cord was just broke on me. So I got to go find me another power cord just to plug in, and that's probably gonna cost me more money to get just to power up my N sixty four. Why I want to do that? And power core just... shouldn't even be that much for a Nintendo sixty four. True, but then again, it is. It is. It, but it, it is. Might, it's a it's brick. Right, if you rare. drop it, it's not going to break. I mean, I seriously doubt it. I think it could break. It, it really can break. I seriously doubt it. It can break. Um, it, that's with any systems. I think the issue I have with yours is it's just so it's just the game console itself. While you do have a lot of good games. Those are Nintendo based games. And I can't com- if I'm going well, game for Sega game. Saturn, if I'm going, like, like aren't those like Sega going, based games? Look, 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 look. If I'm going game for game, I cannot beat you because you got Nintendo hard knockers. You got hard knocking games. But with Sega Saturn, I have I have um I had to go into the other games, which is interesting, but there have some more interesting dynamic games on their console. And while granted, like I said, we're going game for game. I lost because you got the, you got the better games. We can go ahead and get that out the way. You got the better games, better control. Yeah, it's got to be set. It's gonna be, I mean, it got to be set. It got to be. It got to be the Sega Saturn because the controls is better. I'm gonna go back to the controls on this. The controls is better on my system. But also, well, I would I would think that it'd be like compared to yours around the same time since Saturn, PlayStation, and Nintendo 64 were all fighting at that same time, I think PlayStation was beating Saturn anyway. I mean, if, if this is not about this is not about PlayStation because we're going to talk about, if, we, if I would have picked PlayStation, I would have won because I would have daggone picked all those people, but we're not talking about um, we're not talking about PlayStation. PlayStation isn't even, even an argument. I mean, if, if you want to go buy that, then PlayStation beats you too because everybody wants to go buy a PlayStation. But back to the argument at hand, I mean, I mean, we we have a lot of good games. Yeah, but you guys were gonna, you were guys, so we're supposed to have Sonic Extreme, and that was that was only supposed to come out for the Saturn. And where's Sonic Extreme? I mean, yeah. Like what I said, happened? Look, that wasn't that supposed to be like the most popular argument. thing with Saturn? That's was that there was Sonic that's Extreme? That's the original argument. You're going based on the games. I'm not going to argue about the games. You got the better games. But the only reason you got those good games is because of two reasons. You have, you have Nintendo. You have the big three. You have. You have literally the big three. You have but you, I mean, you guys had You Sonic, have no though. time left. Superman 64. You guys have... Oh, hey. oh, no. You take that back. You hey. take that back. Hey. <laughs> I mean, granted, yes, Superman 64 did kind of suck, but... Out of time. All right. Three of them. Any facts relating to, uh, relating to these two consoles that they have chosen? So, Sega Saturn... We, it is the successor to the successful Sega Genesis, and it had a dual CPU architecture and eight processors. The Sega Saturn was initially successful in Japan, but it failed to sell a big number of units in the United States after its surprise May 1995 launch, which was four months before its scheduled release date. And having sold only 9.26 million units worldwide, the Sega Saturn was considered a commercial failure. And for the Nintendo 64, a groundbreaking console, first ever console to feature 3D graphics and the analog stick. Uh, When developers started working on it, they called it the codename Project Reality. It was later named the Nintendo Ultra 64 and then the Nintendo 64. 
the N64 had sold 32.93 million units. 5.54 million of them were sold in Japan, 6.76 million in other regions worldwide, and a whopping 20.63 million were sold in the Americas. Okay. Now, we normally do these for the live one, but I'll throw this in as just for a, a quick, uh, because your arguments were definitely varied and powerful. All right, guys, in your quickest answer possible, give me a reason why if I had buying power, the ability to buy these consoles during back in this time and money were not an option of a thing. Which one sell me on your console effectively? My console is a great starter pack for like a multiplayer thing because it'll like you can go and get the console, it'll come with two controllers. And most of the games that came on the Nintendo 64 were for multiple players. Like, take Mario Kart, for example. You could have up to four players at a time playing on that. Think about having that, like, on. I know we're, like, in the 90s, but think about having that current, like, on one of our current TVs, having the four screen, and you have all the players playing. I think that would be a fun time for you compared to, like, Sega Saturn, where more of that is more, like, single-player-based stuff. Okay. Oh, it's my turn? Yes, it's your turn. Um, There's nobody else here, so it must be your turn. It must be. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to keep this short and simple. Um, mine can do the exact same thing, but unlike her console, my game can get, my game, I can have Street Fighter versus, um, we can have literally X-Men versus Street Fighter which is basically a step up to Marvel versus Capcom in the arcade. N64 do not have that. So if you want to play actual, a little prequel to Marvel versus Capcom, you can play it on the second Saturn. Okay. Before I, throw, before I ask Theo for her, her thoughts on who won, Mac, the game you were thinking of was Panzer Dragoon. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't get it out of my mouth. I couldn't get it out of my mouth. I'm sorry, I knew it was in there. That's a good game. <laughs> All right, so Theo, who do you think won? So ultimately, I like Angie's argument again, um, being more family based. Uh, I have never heard of the Sega Saturn before today. So. Ultimately, I would go for Angie's just because it is a little bit more popular based on numbers, especially on the fact that I gave that it was the Sega Saturn was commercially a failure. So the Nintendo 64 is definitely something that I would go for if I was uh, buying it in that time. So I would go for Angie. I can win. Uh, Ticket, 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 ticket. Yeah. Give me a second. Okay. Just had to check something out of my own real quick. So, my thoughts. Throwing all the arguments of titles aside, which, to be honest, and Angie, your last title. I'm sorry, even I hadn't heard of that one. Oh. If if you were looking definitely looking for a bit more of an a bit more influential of a title, especially if for titles coming from Rarisoft, you could have literally have gone with Banjo Kazooie or Donkey Kong sixty four. Well Conquer's bad for a days. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> um Mac. It's Segata Sanchiro. Sorry, um, I know I got his I, name wrong. I'm sorry. It, he will punch you for that. I know, but <laughs> hey, that'll be awesome. Come at me, Segata Sanchiro. I always wanted him to punch me. Um, <sighs> I will buy a Sega Saturn if you punch me. <laughs> to be honest, 
going on all the arguments that weren't based on game titles. Oh, this is a tough one. I just know it's not t- that tough. Oh no, you you have no idea. <laughs> Actually, I, I think I'm gonna have to disagree with you, Theo. I think Mac Mac had this one because. Oh no! What? what? Be- Here's my reasoning, Angie. Just like how Mac <laughs> shot uh, Mac shot himself in the foot in the first argument, you de- you. I did too. By mentioning that yes, the controls weren't perfect. Act- many people would actually counter counter that argument by saying, for the time, the controls were more than flawless. Yeah, the controller layout was actually very ergonomical, and it was the basis for the GameCube controller, which you cited the reason why. We don't have N64 anymore. Dang it. Uh, so, point goes to Mac. What? I Dang it. That. Wait. All That's right. A- That's yeah. okay. All right. We'll let him have it. It's fine. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to question number three. Woo! As we have set as we have lovingly set this in the 90s, as per our... (laughs) As per our host. With Y2K upon us, what 90s video game character would you want to partner up with to survive the end of the world? We will start with Angie. (laughs) I went with Link from Ocarina of Time. This is gonna be good. Shut up, Mac. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Mac, I'm going with it's tail time, aka Gex from Enter the Gecko. Seeing that we're stuck in the nineties, but yeah, Gex. All right. We are running short on time, so this is gonna be fast. I am actually going. I hate to do this, but because people do have obligations after this, I'm cutting one minute off of the declaration time, so make your announcements fast. Angie, go. Okay, well, Link, obviously, he likes to rest, so he, you know he's going to be well-rested for any adventure that's going to happen if there is an apocalypse for Y2K. And he's, scientifically, he's oddly way too strong for his own good. If you, like, even just child Link... No person, like no child, should be able to carry that heavy of a sword by himself, like he does with a shield and everything. So there's also that. Not to mention, he has access to all kinds of magical stuff going on. He has a magical ocarina that he can transport to the future. He can go back to the past if he has to. Um, he has a fairy that can help him, that helps guide him through his adventures. And I'm going to end it at that part right there. <laughs> Quick and to the point. You actually still had about a minute and nineteen left. Woo! All right, Mac, go. Gex is an awesome character. He will keep me entertained. Um, that's the thing about p- p- being with somebody for the Y2K. You want somebody that can keep you entertained. That's the big thing that you want. He's entertainment. Um, also, as an added bonus, he has took down a ton of things. He has literally took on magical, magical, um, um, magical Indian t- took you guys from. The um, TV um, and, t- uh, and the media dimension to Mega Res, the big dinosaur of Res, to Res himself, who literally grew up as big as this entire house and literally slammed Gex and Gex beat him. Gex is awesome. I am literally going to have fun. He's going to literally, we're going to literally go into the media dimension. He's literally going to find a way to give me a beer. And I'm just, and look, look, it's voiced by Dana Gould. He is voiced by Dana Gould. Who doesn't want to hang out with Dana Gould? Dana Gould is fucking awesome. I want to hang out with Dana Gould. He is awesome. I rest my face. All right. Same reasoning as to the declaration round for, for the cut down. Three minutes, 
three minutes on the grudge timer. Go. Your guy is a lizard. We could squish him. No, you can't. Um, so <laughs> also, as an added bonus, I got, you do not hear the feats that I said. He beaten a monster that was literally a – Mega Rez was literally Godzilla. You so are talking about the current, like, the game that you're take, pulling your Gex from, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, he's, he's not a little wizard. He's actually human size. If you look at the end of the gecko, he is literally at the same height as those, um, the, as those agents in the beginning. In regards to your character killing a bunch of magical things, my character has also killed a bunch of magical things. Yeah, He's still skeletons that have come yeah, back to life. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So that means you're going to be around him and he's literally going to be sitting up there shooting. He's going to literally be cutting up everything in front of you while you're just sitting up there doing nothing, right? No, I'd be watching his back and I'd be probably alongside yeah, him cutting up stuff too. That's the thing. But, but when with an apocalypse, apocalypse, you all have to put your weight in. You don't just yeah. sit behind. Yeah, but you... <laughs> that, there's, there's so much that's, that's, that's good and all. You got somebody to protect you. I mean, but at the added bonus. Again, he's, he's not mute. just protecting me. He's a mute. He's mute. He doesn't it's talk. So? He doesn't talk. I don't think you, you don't need. You all you're going to do is pick up something and just say, hey, yeah. <laughs> that's all you're gonna hear technically in game he doesn't like it from our point of view he doesn't talk because he's us and from our point of view in the game he, I don't see him real real no link actually talks if you think about it because otherwise well, how would uh, they I'm respond to small. oh I, so I that's your it, name or oh that's what that I means call bullshit on this because we don't know that shit that's bullshit how would, game, then how would the NPCs answer him? He, he probably shakes his head every time and does that, because that's what he did in Link in the past. He just shook his head like, so he, you know where it's at? How no. could you tell he did that in Link to the Past? I in mean, Link to the Past was 8-bit. sign language. I mean, I've literally got a talking lizard that is literally going to be telling For all jokes, you know, he probably does gonna, speak. Who? And that doesn't matter in an that apocalypse matters. anyway. You mean, it doesn't so, matter. You, so what? So what? Okay. So you're saying that you can still matter. do the talking, and he can still talk no, back so to you. Just because gonna, he's mute doesn't mean he you but, can't but, have conversations okay, with him. Okay. Well, let's say if he can't talk, it's still boring. It's not fun. How would it be boring? It'd be boring. So you're gonna sit up there and like, hey, Link, hi. I am with with. With Gex, I'm literally going to get a full-length conversation. You can have a full-length conversation with Link, and let's get off the fact about conversation, because that has nothing to do with an do. apocalypse. That has nothing no. to do with an apocalypse. I mean, we both pick characters No, in apocalypse, you it. have to survive. Yeah, and Gex can survive, and so can Link. But when it comes to that extra time to spend your, to literally sit down... And, and also, Link has magical time. items. He can go back in time, forward in time. He okay. has a magical shield. He has a, he has the, the master has sword. Magical shield. Wow. Damn. I was gonna go back to the future. Damn it. <laughs> Theo, quick facts. Uh, I actually couldn't find anything for these guys to. Yeah, sound arguments give. then. All right. Anything. No, that's fine. I who do you think say, I still say the talking is bullshit, but then again, I don't know. You're the one who brought it up, man. <laughs> I'm still I, sticking with Angie. I knew you were going to do that. Okay. Any reasoning or just... I mean, she brings up a lot of valid points of his shield, his sword, the strength, like all of that. Like, It's all legitimate where you just have a talking gecko. Might as well just get Geico. Oh, that's a good joke, but I literally said he took on a lot of stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so given the fact that we are apparently looking out upon my 2K and the apparent end of these. But, by the way, if anybody realizes, Y2K was supposed to be the end of the world through VS cybernetics. Which means, um... Which means that Mac worded the question weird? Long, um. long, long, long <laughs> short, well, the thing is, is... We'll just say that Y2K yeah. became an apocalypse. 
<laughs> well, no, it's it technically it was supposed to be apocalypse, but it was supposed to be apocalyptic in the fact that we would be going back in time technologically. Yeah. Which means Mac literally simply from the way you put it, your day question. Gex would not work because there is no media dimension. Point. But he still does all that awesome stuff outside though. He so your that? answer zero? Uh <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, An- Angie ha- had this one, Mac, literally, and this is going based on the fact that I've done, I've played through both of these games. Link has the enormous strength, which technically, even as a kid, I that, was you... technically, that was technically a dagger he was using. Yeah, but you still didn't let me talk about the whole, I mean, I feel like, so, just to get this out the way, because I know she won. We know that we have to talk during the apocalypse. That's bullshit, right? You gotta talk to the person. That's boring. You that's know? actually that. That's actually something I was gonna bring up. Link does talk. Link does <laughs> not talk. I am not actually no. Talk the- no, Shigeru Miyamoto confirmed. Link does talk. Shigeru Miyamoto's bullshit. This is not. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> How dare hey, you, sir? He is bullshit. bullshit. He is. Oh. Ag Alnuma confirmed. I know, honey. I'm almost done. Link talks. All right, but so Angie does get that point. We are moving on as fast as we can. This is definitely a hurry up, a hurry up game. So, final question of the event: I'm like hearing some like, some like... worst game of the year, nineteen ninety-eight. We will start with Mac. Reboot. Okay, Angie. Extreme Paint Brawl. Okay. Give, I'd say just give the quickest definite declarations you could ever give. We have less than a minute. Okay. Simple. They literally took they they took a great show a great a great show that was on Tanami and fucked it up. It was a great show on Tanami. Might not have been good to others. It was simplified. It was basically a game within the PC. A game within the PC, and they fucked it up somehow. It's terrible. If you watched the show and you played the game, you thought you you was like, what is this shit? It's terrible. And you're literally on a glider. You're literally on a glider, and you're literally on that glider the whole time. You cannot get on... You There's no way you're going to be walking. You are literally... On a glider and literally using all your you how you're going to mend and defend on a glider. This fuck this down. Angie. Okay, extreme paint paint brawl. Like back then was just one of the crappiest games ever. It was trying to use the old obsolete build engine. And for those of you who don't know, that was just a really bad engine for like old 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 consoles, pretty much. And it was trying to combine that with paintball because at the time paintball was starting to become like the more popular thing that teenagers were doing. And it just sucked. There was like, you couldn't de- determine who was a friend, who was an enemy. The soundtrack just did not fit the game at all. It only allowed players to roam through the map with, without any enemies to target. And it was just really hard to really play with friends and the AIs just behaved weird um and the computer controlled teammates were always just getting caught on everything it is far just all out it just wasn't the greatest game that it should have done all right so again i do this only in the interest of time this is normally done this is normally done way differently but people have things to do and time is well past minute and a half grudge it out I don't even remember what your game was again, Mac. I'm sorry. <laughs> how bad it was. Look, the stream paint brawl. Wow, no, I just meant like I forgot which one you said. It's reboot. Wow, oh, right. The stream paint ball was very, very bad, and it had a bad engine. It still didn't hurt the people that love the anime of this game. Now, there's a lot of other games that had that, that took now video now movies to anime. You automatically know that you're reaching into a barrel of of mousetraps. With video games come anime to go into the game, 
you know there's not a lot of mouse traps in there because usually you don't have a lot of time to mess this up. But they literally completely messed this up. You play Bob, who is literally a guardian of the internet, of the whole net, not the net, but a guardian of mainframe. And it's literally not, I mean, what does the main thing you do in games these days? Walk. Walk. Yeah, but at least your I game, know. your game still scored pretty generally. Oh, you got a oh. you got a 4.1 out of it's 10. A, I got no, a no, no, no. Seven okay. out of 10 for my game. Uh, oh, a well, point seven. I go with your um. You want to go with ratings? It doesn't matter about ratings. I mean, Kingdom the Crystal Skull Rotten Tomatoes got Wait, a. Wait, isn't um, question you know not like the worst game? So isn't that very pretty much based on yeah, ratings that's, alone? That's critics. Critics are wrong sometimes. They got. I mean, there's a lot of people that will look at this. A lot of they, people go after those kinds of reviews. Easy, they though. Look, if you're going by the grade, then that's bull crap. Because you're going by the grade, you got nothing. I don't even think you played your game. I played Time. my game. I played my game. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, who's buying the marshmallows? Just for the record, I was going off the IGN rankings at the it. time. I knew it. <laughs> well, because they're critics. Yeah, but they're not right. And they were like the hot. They were the hot. They were like the. Yeah, but they're not right all the time, Angie. I know they're not right all the time, I, I, but yeah. going off of that. Yeah, but if you're going off of that, you're just... You know. if, I, if I could point out the irony, a critic talking bad about other critics. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. I'm not right all the time. I'm not, I admit it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Yeah. We're moving. We, apo we apologize to Angie's family. We're making this as fast <laughs> as possible. Yeah. All yeah, right. Hit, Angie. <laughs> Mr. Theo. Uh, no facts for either game, just because I found nothing for them. Angie oh stated everything about Extreme Paintball. Um, no facts. Okay. Yeah, and I when I looked in the when I looked in the reboot, I, yeah, I got more links to the show than I did the game. So, uh, really tough decisions. Um, mm -hmm. Really quickly, and going just literally based on each argument. Who won? Oh my gosh, like they both had very, very legitimate. Like, I'm very like the other arguments, I could easily be like, I'm easily this side. This one's kind of really up in the air because I have absolutely no idea what either of these games are. But based on arguments, I will have to go with Angie I knew again. It. <laughs> I just knew it. I can't win. I, I'm, I'm just... It's not you personally, Mac. It's just your delivery. Okay. Oh. You didn't like, it's like y'all don't hear the argument. I, I literally said it's based on the anime, and she literally just brought up the whole. I can't believe it's based on a rating system that's probably bullshit. Well, to, if I could be fair, in a prior in, in a prior match, you used you used rating system as a as a uh, valid reasoning to choose someone else's answer over people who didn't use rating system. Ah, oh, point. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so. <sighs> Both, both of these games just literally sound horrible, and I just I want to give both of you the point if I could, but I I, I just can we just end in a tie? No, no, because <laughs> I I mean I mean if you I'd almost say if you guys because it's like I will say ex extreme paint brawl while doing it doing a thing and having its own ha having like basing itself on what teenagers do, were doing i who do hold a stronger side argument towards screwing up something that has source material and that this is definitely a bit more of a personal than argumentative pick but yeah i'd actually have to go with mac on this one what really person what happened to not using personal things for your answers and your no. you didn't even no. play the game i did too i legit said that i had played my game before and it did suck if i could be completely honest i 
watched playthroughs of both of both games, and they both suck pretty yeah. hardcore. So, because people have obligations to do, if we want to handle this at a later time and date, we can get to that PvP between you two that needs to happen. Fine, we'll do a tiebreaker later. I can, I'll live with that. Okay. Mac. We'll do that. We'll do this at. We'll do this at Pack South. I'm not gonna be at Pack South. You'll be. I'm on. not gonna be at Pack South either. Yeah, we'll do it through video. We'll do it at Pack South, people. On the next episode of GF15. You mean Gamer Grudge? No, GF15. We'll do. GF15. Because it's they're gonna be at Pack South, so they're it's gonna be the GF15 team excluding myself. Mm -hmm. I'll be on video. You'll be there. You'll I'll, be there. I'll be there. I'll just be, yeah, on the video. Yeah, I'll be there. All right, I'm so, a sort of a piddle case, you know. Uh, and, I mean, literally great arguments from both of you on that one. I really, like, it, that was probably the hardest, hardest decision I had to make in terms of, like, because it's, like, watching both of them, it's like, oh, God. Yeah, I mean, if you play Rogue Reboot, Ro Ro you're like, oh, God, this is fun. I remember I played it as a kid. I was like, oh, God, no, no. Where's where's Bob? Why Bob looks like this? What's that some decimal? Where the, what the hell Megabyte's doing? And yeah, if, I'm sorry. if I can also be complete, completely honest, Andy, Andy I think, the, like I said, the biggest, the biggest thing is the fact that it's like, Screwing up source material is really one of the bigger sins of cross media. Yeah. It's like, you just don't do that. It's the reason why we complain about video game based movies from the 90s right. and early 2000s. I mean, I think my argument of with the movies is like putting your hand in a with a bucket of fake mouse traps, but in there you don't know if you're getting a hand in a muslim. But I'm sorry know. to rush this, but I really got to get going. All right, all right. Yeah, all right. Later, guys. We will definitely pick up this. This is going to be going into fatality round. Yeah, so, um, guys, we will continue this on Shield 15 and Pack South. But until then, people, um, let's do her. Give me the, give me the end it. Let's go. Yeah. Angie, let's go with you. What you got to plug? Um, well, as you guys know, I am Angelic Sin. You can call me Angie. I am always handing out the Game Fixers. You can find me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok and mixer.com forward slash angelic sin or angelic sin. Sorry, I'm speed talking. Um, and I also have a merch shop at spreadshirt.com forward slash user forward slash angelic sin. Right. And you can also find me on YouTube. Also, yeah. I, I apologize, Angie. I did not mean to say Miyamoto's bullshit. He is not bullshit. Thank you. But he's full. I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> but until next time, guys, I will see you all in the next episode. All right. See you. Peace, Angie. Bye. All right. Zero, what you got? Well, I'll let you go. Theo, you didn't yeah. pick me once, but what you got to plug? Uh, I'm Theovian21. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at uh, Theovian21. Uh, I do go by Theo. So. There's that. Right. Zero. Well, as you know, you guys can find me here run, running with the things behind the scenes and keeping Mac on track. Yeah. Uh, but you'll mostly find me on the GF1 Discord, which will be linked down in the description. Feel free to come join us, talk, talk some stuff, and... Uh, who knows if you if you're nice enough, you may get on an episode yourself. Might if you can just contact us. We don't, we'll get you. Oh. We'll get yeah, you. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll, get you. we'll try. We'll try. Um, other than that, um, ha you can also find me on Twitter at Crimson Shooter with a Z. Yes. What a Z? Yes, yeah. C R I M Z O N. Um. But that's really all I have got to plug. All right. Well, first of all, I want to tell y'all guys, this is probably coming out on, um, this is coming out probably 12 o'clock midnight on New Year's. I want to wish all y'all a happy, happy New Year's. Um, uh, guys, I want to thank y'all for um, celebrating another year with the Game Fixers. Uh, this has been a great year. 
This is the first time I got to 1K. Um, I'm on the way to 2K, so I'm thankful for that. A lot of things I'm thankful for. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of things to be thankful for to, to what you're doing. Um, when I started this channel, like I said, I was doing something just to create, you know, just a bond with other gamers and play around and hang out with some people. Now I get to hang out. This, there's nothing more funner than hanging out with your friends. Yeah, this is fun. I love doing this show and I love doing what I do. And it's, it's fun. I love everybody. I love all these guys that work with me, even though they don't vote for me. So it was, some of us don't vote for people, but I still love them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, guys, uh, please um, have a happy new year. Be safe. Don't make, stay, don't stay in your house. Do not, do not. I'm going to preach this. Do not go out there on the streets drinking and driving. Just stay in your house, open a beer, and watch. I hope you're watching this on your couch, drinking it, and celebrating with me. Um, that's all I got to do. I'm preaching now. Um, and also, um, I want to um, also don't forget we have uh, me and Theo has been doing. Um, me and Theo has been doing our review show. If you have not watched Christmas, we did our Christmas episode on Theo. What was it? Batman Returns. Woo! Yeah, it was. We had special guest Angie with us. Mm -hmm. And that was fun because we were talking about how the cow was hot and how she had different suits. Just watch the episode. Don't listen to Mac right now. He's talking nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Um, um, go ahead. Oh, I also, I'd also like to plug for all of us that we at GF1 Studios do also have a merch store as well. We do. Link will link will be down in the description. Feel free to, you know, if you like to if you like everything that we all the content we produce and you'd love to support us, feel free to buy uh, buy something. We would love to see your guys' support. Also, if you're coming to Pack South, I'm just letting you know we are going to be doing a live episode of Gamer Crush. I know you want to see that. So we're going to do a live episode of Gamer Grudge with people in Pack South. And we're in the winner of that episode. will not only get a complimentary patch, possibly a patch. I don't know. Possibly we're working on it, right? Zero. <laughs> the patch, patch, yeah. patch should be uh, patch should be within the works. Okay. Hey. We'll, we'll, huh? All right. That's okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. Well, we have a. We'll not only give you a patch, but we're going to give you a ten dollar, no, twenty dollar gift card to. I don't know. It's a mystery, but we're going to give you that plus twenty dollars. That's for y'all for coming and supporting. So make sure you come out, fight on Gamer Grudge, and who knows, you maybe win that twenty dollars in a patch, and something else. I don't know. But we're, right now, I know for sure it's twenty dollars. So you're gonna get a twenty dollars gift card. That's a given. Um, so um, I want to thank y'all for watching. Um, keep watching the show. Hope you like all the stuff that we did earlier this year. And we will see you in January because right now we done with 2019. Well, 1998. No, nah, I'm gonna quit that. 2019 <laughs> is done, people. Now we're into 2020. See y'all, guys. About time you quit that. <laughs> See y'all. Peace. Peace.